All right, here we go. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. Happy VPR Radio Day. I'm excited as always. I'm here with my partner, the incredibly talented and handsome DJ FMI. How are you, partner? I'm all right. I'm feeling good. Uh, it's another bright Thursday. The sun's out. It's fall. The, it uh, the leaves look beautiful uh, where I'm at and the drive's amazing up here just watching the, you know, the change of scenery. It with. is beautiful. Yeah, it's very scenic. How are you feeling today, Kiana? I'm feeling good. You know, um, this has definitely come to be like my favorite day of the week besides the weekend. So I always look forward to just feeling uplifted no matter how my week is going. If it's dragging, I'm especially looking forward to it because I'm like, oh, at least tomorrow I'll be in such a great mood. <laughs> you know what it is? So all the people that tune into VPR, uh, throughout the week, I'll come across so much topics, especially online, that me and Keanu would just, you know, text and talk about yes. uh, over the day. So when we get to VPR Thursdays and we can go over these topics and, you know, um, just open the floor to have an open conversation with our viewers, it, right. it, nothing feels better than that. You know, shout out to the people that have been subscribing to the, our YouTube on uh, VPR. Shout out to Flea Savage with all the artists that are dropping their music and are featuring VPR. We love all the support and we see all the tags that y'all been doing. And we really appreciate that, especially Facebook, too. So thank you. Yeah, that was a great video, too, partner. I love that. I love the the segments and featuring our artists. You know, what I love about what we do is that we always promote the independent artists. We have been that way for years, even, you know, in our past businesses. So when we came together, if you guys don't know, even when we were live in the studio, we only play independent music and we get artists from all across the world and like when when fmi does his sets live that's probably what i miss the most about the studio is your live sets you know that energy is you go in partner you go in yeah, you I, I that tried. <laughs> um, and, and vpr for the people that do miss the live sex if you want to hear uh my mixes you could definitely head to mixcloud and you can hear some of the unsigned music that i'm spinning out there every yeah. week and we also feature them on our spotify playlist so look up the vpr right. radio playlist featured by djf mine canada goddess you will see all the artists that i keep in my serato that i'm spending weekly at these clubs so yeah. you can keep in tune you that's right I mean? and if you're an artist and you want to submit your music um for consideration you can either send it to our dropbox vpr.radio at gmail.com or you can send us an email please don't just email email us music no title no introduction no nothing because we don't know what to do with it we're only going to feature an artist oh and also if you're not following us please don't yeah. send music for consideration like <laughs> consider it when you want consideration okay <laughs> also guys so you guys have been chiming in all week with the kanye madness that's oh been going on i on knew our, it i knew our, it was coming partner and our on our instagram page and we've been cutting up videos and so I want to start this discussion uh, on Kanye and the whole Kanye situation. Mm. The post that's going to come up after we finish this live today, VPR, and this is for the people that are tuning in live. You get the little special sneak peek, but if the we post that is <laughs> <laughs> the post that's going to come up after this live ends is who's canceling who. Mm. And I know we're live on a few platforms, but mm. I don't think. It is a question that we need to ask. So I understand the, the world painting Kanye as this madman that's um, harassing Kim. Mm -hmm. And if you looked at it for all of the years when it came to the Kim Kardashian uh, family, they have always had a positive spin on the media, whether it be TMZ, no matter where they're being covered, people like to put them in a positive light. Mm -hmm. Even if the sex, it, it doesn't matter what she can do, mm -hmm. they will spin it and put it in a positive light. Mm -hmm. So as far as Kanye, when he's arguing for his kids and arguing his truth, mm -hmm. when people are arguing their truth, I can listen to it. I may not have to agree with all of it, but I can hear some of the points that he was saying yeah. in that Absolutely. Drink Champs interview with Nori. I sat down and I watched it, Kiana, yeah. and I wanted to really, really dissect it so I could have a, a, a better talking point when we came on the show today. And when I'm watching the internet just get mad at him for some of his comments made toward George Floyd, which he is due. Mm -hmm. uh, comments, there's anti-Semitism remarks, which you do, mm -hmm. but they have some truth to it. Oh, yeah. There was a ton of truth to it. And I, I'd i like to start this, I'd like to preface it by saying, do you remember when um, Kanye said that slavery was a choice? Yeah. Okay. No one canceled him then, right? <laughs> so when he spoke out against something that was a sensitive topic toward the Black community, 
There was no backlash. There were no endorsements dropped. Nope. There were no deals that were canceled. Nope. So when we take it to Black Lives Matter, right? Mm -hmm. Do they really? When you look at how quickly things can unravel the minute you speak about, about another. See if you step out of line. Another it, community. And, and our community is spoken about all the time. You turn on Fox 5. Oh, oh look at. Look at minorities filling up jail cells and we need bail reform. Yeah, you know what? We do need bail reform in New York. I, I'm, I think so. But why is it okay when it's presented by them? But when, he, he, That's my thing. There are racially charged groups on Facebook. Um, there are, you know, KKK is still active. There's So even when it comes to like social media and him being canceled on social media and having his, his accounts removed and such, the level of censorship that they have gone to to shut him down from speaking yep. his truth and from speaking and allowing people to um, be able to really listen to it or you know even if they don't believe they, it just to be able to hear what he has to say is dumbfounding because we literally had a president in office that used to make comments aggressive and oppressive comments against people of color against women. I mean, he was completely outraged. Grabbing people by their private areas. I say oh, this what? online. People look oh, at me what? weird. Our president says this, uh, says this online. And he's still it, talking. I mean, he hasn't stopped talking. I think Twitter censored him once upon a time, and then he just started his own thing. But yeah. at the end of the day, he kept going and going and going. Why is it that when Kanye spoke out against one specific group of people, A, it was a backlash and labeled as anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. Quickly. Quickly. And number two, if the whole point is that we shouldn't say things against other communities that can be sensitive, why is it that, that it was not the same level of responsiveness? Yeah. I, and, my, and my question, just to piggyback off yours, um, why is it okay when they profit off our, 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 our music? Why is it okay when they profit off Black deaths? Why is it okay... When an album drops, when the artist passes away, a postpartum album, they can profit off that. But when Kanye opens up his mouth to speak upon how they're profiting off of blacks and black businesses and the brands, it's an issue. I just and, want to know what, you know, and I know he said a lot of things and I'm not yeah. even going to speak on them all because I didn't even get to see the entire interview. So, like, I'll be completely honest. And it was yeah. pulled off before I had a chance to. Oh, it's but, still up there. The re oh, the reuploads are everywhere. YouTube is okay. actually taking gonna, them down, but the reuploads are everywhere. Yeah. I'm gonna go so we can actually um chat about it in depth because I'm I definitely want to watch it all. It's eleven eleven. Um, <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that in for that specific topic, not only has he said that, but we've spoken about that on our show with JD Mass. Yeah, and that's what mm -hmm. uh huh. Right, and, and check out that JD Mass it. interview. It would definitely shed a lot of light. Especially yep. on what Kanye was talking about. You get it yep. on Spotify, all places where you can stream. Please check that out. Yes, the proof is in the pudding, Mac. I completely agree. Yeah, so, and it's just, it, it's selective cancellation of certain entities. Because look at yeah. Alex Jones. He was on there for five years speaking about Sandy Hook and how that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And look what the parents did with him after five years of berating. And he's still going on. You know, so what is it with Kanye that makes it so 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 it's such a hot topic that's my mm -hmm. thing you know what mm -hmm. i mean sometimes i understand you have to shoot the messenger he's not the perfect messenger people can say that about trump too but they still find reasons they like trump and during the interview a huge amount of followers like at the end of the day let's not yeah. let's not front. he's got people that follow him like to nauseam you know what i mean like he's got <laughs> his following they're not shutting down his message. Sometimes I play poker online and people will come and be like, F fight and blah, blah, blah. Like they'll just yell out <laughs> random things. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and that's where we are. That's where we are. It's just like, if you don't like what I like, screw you. You know what I mean? There's no there's no middle ground anymore. Uh, politics are really just through, through, through a wrench isn't, in that. Isn't freedom of speech the First Amendment? Not, not for certain people. Uh, right. I, I, and and Kiana, just on a broader aspect of it, I just feel like a lot of platforms are afraid to speak about the situation. I mean, the topic with Kanye and what he addressed and what he was actually championing for, what he was actually going for, missing the message. And I feel like they, instead of 
instead of having this tough conversation about who profits off what, like he said during the interview, I don't see any Jews, Jewish people signed to black people. Um, you look, no matter where you look around, uh, from Balenciaga to this, to that, to that, to that, as soon as he made these comments, they cut ties with them. So it goes to show who's controlling a certain amount of money. You know what I mean? We could, we could choose to ignore it. You want to go along with the status quo, then go ahead, be my guest, be my guest, but it's never going to, it's never going to change unless someone speaks out and Kanye's not the best, but he was a, he, he was a billionaire. Y'all he went from, what, what was it? 2 billion. He lost two billion in one day, and now he became a four hundred millionaire. I ain't a pocket watcher, but okay. Lord. I mean, but that's all allegedly as well, right? Because yeah. at the end of the day, we don't know what kind of money he may or may not be washing or have hidden in the Cayman Islands, and or et cetera, et cetera. You know <laughs> what I mean? What's liquid? What's not? What's invested? What's not? He's not a dumb person. I remember a story which was crazy to me because it just shows the level of selfishness, to be honest. But Kim was speaking in an interview about how a brand wanted her to do a post. I think we spoke about this before for a million dollars. And Kim's in trouble right now for cryptocurrency. Uh, she did a pump and dump and they're actually going after all those huge entertainers that were doing pump and dumps and all the rappers are doing it. So she's, she's going through that right now. She has to pay back a certain amount of money, a big amount of money. Well, listen, I'll tell you this. She said the brand that wanted to work with her, that wanted her to do a post for a million dollars, they often knocked off easy stuff. So she asked him, which is crazy to me, the fact that you would even consider it, right? But she asked him and he was like, no, um, I'd rather you not do it. So then a couple of days later, he like gave her a million dollars or bought her stock shares or whatever. But like, he's an investor. You know what I mean? Like, I don't mm. think that he's out here just throwing his money everywhere. From what I hear, he's got land and all sorts of things going on. So... When it comes to Kanye, first of all, everyone having all of these conversations and your ideas or whatever, it's fine and good, but I'm more concerned with so much more that's going on in the world besides the fact that he's got more money than all of us. <laughs> from a billionaire to a 400 millionaire, I'm still looking to be on that level. So I will take that 400 million. <laughs> and, and like Jay-Z did. <laughs> and what, what, what kills me, I want to see if people are going to stand like solidarity with Kanye and still purchase some of his, uh, his, his merch. You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. So let's see. Let's see if Yeezy still sell without Adidas. Let's see if it sells without Gap. Well, it's power well, I, heard, I heard someone that worked in Foot Locker, DJ, say that they sent out an email, like, pull it all off the display yep. and et cetera, I, et cetera. So as far as I know, like Marshalls, Burlington Coat <laughs> Factory, Century 21, if that's still around, that, you know, Yeezys will probably be like forty nine ninety nine. But Hey, no, 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 no. All I heard just now was the, the Yeezys that I got above my head in my closet right now, the price just went up. So if anybody want to buy them, I got some OG Yeezys now. Nah, I wouldn't even sell them yet, partner. That's probably going to be an investment for you. You feel me? Like, I, I would hold I that for a couple of years. Hold <laughs> that. Put them in a box. Don't let them get dusty. But let's bring on our first guest. I see that Moon has pulled up. I definitely can't wait to speak to her. So let's bring her up to the stream. Hi, Moon. How are you? Good morning. It's morning, right? Yeah, good morning. Yeah. <laughs> it's early, but I ain't that early. <laughs> I like that. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Good. I love the hair. Yeah, you know, I try to keep my swag different. Okay. You know, I switch it up every yes. once in a while. Just like your music. So yes. I definitely want to talk about that. And let's just delve right in. I'm really curious to know when you realized that, like, you were talented, you were a singer, and how you got started. Jeez. It was <laughs> difficult for me to realize that, actually. I realized that when I was... 21 years old. Um, I come from a very musical family. So it's, it's, it's almost like if you were in a, a family and everybody played sports, my family, everybody did music. You didn't have a choice, you know? And of course we started in a church and my dad was the one who trained us vocally. So, I mean, we was on some clock sisters type stuff, like get up out the bed. I got this song. You need to learn everybody's part. And then you need to go and teach it to everybody in the choir. <laughs> So like on some Jacksons, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was saying in my head. I was like, I'm thinking it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but we started in, in the church and in, in the church that I went to in the youth choir that we were part of, we rehearsed like it was the military. Like you start at noon and you end at like three or four. And, you know, it was more so like, you know, every, every portion Everybody had to learn their parts and then we had to sing. It was like Stanima. You, you were taught how to uh, use your vocals for long periods of time. 
um, how to uh, present yourself in front of an audience. And so I got started that way, but my family is a very talented family. And I wasn't the one in the family with the voice, <laughs> believe it or not. I was the one who had the different voice. Um, my older sister, you know, everyone's like, oh, that's the next Tony Braxton. You know, my brother, um, he sings, but he doesn't do it anymore. Then I actually have a little brother who um, lives out in Atlanta, uh, who's an artist. His name is Pretty Rico Bands. And so um, me, I kind of was just kind of doing spoken word and stuff like that in the city. And uh, someone heard me sing with my spoken word and they were like, you know, you should actually try to do that. And I said, I bet. Because for me, it's like, if it's anything artistic that I can try, I'll try it. I tried to rap. I tried to beatbox. I tried to paint. I tried anything artistic. I'm going to give it, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a go because you never know what may come from it. And when I uh, started to discover, discover my voice, it was my, my husband who actually was the one who said, nah, you got this. And um, people, people need to hear you. And I'm like, all right. Bet. <laughs> I, love the, I love the laid back, like, all right, bet. I got it. I got it. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question because I, I love how you described, you know, growing up. Do you feel like you initially moved away from music and toward more other creative ventures because you didn't want to feel that pressure that maybe you had felt in being, you know, forcibly learning how to perform and have that stamina? You're like, all right, I can do it. But is that really what I wanted to do? It's like you had to let your soul come back to it. Well, I've, I, I feel, I've been a writer all my life. And so I really enjoyed creating stories and writing and um, putting that first. I didn't think about singing uh, or anything because I didn't think I was any good at it. And if you don't feel that you're confident in what you do, you're not going to put yourself out there to get played. And so for me, it was a confidence thing. It was a you have to believe in yourself in order to do this. And I didn't get that until like I met my husband, honestly, I, I, I didn't get it. And he wasn't trying to gas me up or nothing, you know, but it was just like, I've never heard anything like you. Like, I've never heard that. And you need to, ex ex you know, ex expand on that. And I, you know, I'm like, Hey, why not? <laughs> hey, VPR. So I was on YouTube uh, two days prior to this and I actually ended up on your channel. Uh -huh. I've seen your tiny death submission <laughs> and I sat, I was at the gym. Mind you, I'm on the treadmill. I was like, you know, let me, let me listen to this. And I was like, this is amazing. Cause I already <laughs> like tiny death. And I was like, oh no, I couldn't wait to have you on the show. So what is your creative process like before going into the studio, before you record? Um, sheesh. My creative process is a never ending process. It never, it never ends because see, okay, what, what people have to understand is I'm a multifaceted type of person. I'm a polymath. You know what I'm saying? I do everything that I can do artistically. And so throughout the day, you know, not only am I a, a wife, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a homeschool teacher. You know, I teach my daughter. I got a daughter in high school. I got, you know, you know, with I'm in business. I have like two side businesses on top of being an artist and a part-time job. And so in between time, if an idea pops up in my head, I just type it out and, and, and put it to the side and save it for later. When it's time for me to go into the studio with my partner, um, my producing partner, Indigo Rose, like <laughs> he's a nut. I'm, he's crazy. And so the energy that he has matched with my energy, it just makes the studio just amazingly fun. You know, because he talks like a 1970s pimp, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, every time he see me, it's like, back, <laughs> hey, back. I love it. You know, he's like, so we going to get in here and do this. And I'd be like, seriously, okay. you know, tenderness, tenderness, honey. So, you oh. know. <laughs> Where is he from? Where is he's he from? from D he's from D.C. And okay. it's almost like we are two sides of the same coin. And, um. A lot of times I'm like, oh, it's because of you. I'm writing these sexy songs because, you know, that's your energy. And he's like, but bye, you wrote some sexy songs on your own. So that's all you. I said, okay. <laughs> so being in the studio with him is fun because nothing is off limits. Nothing. Nothing. Creatively now, nothing is off limits because... Right. 
I may be humming something and I'm like, oh, that's funny. That's funny. And he's like, but in my word, let's try it. And we go. <laughs> I love that. And I think when it comes to making music, you definitely need that sort of partnership because you guys can just kind of feed and throw things off of each other. Tell us about your latest project. Well, I'm, I've been working on this project for quite some time, actually. I really have. And um, just trying to uh, find the time to get it all put together. It's a concept project for me. Um, most of the songs that came that I already put out as singles are on this project. And a lot of these songs are very um, sexy, um, very liberating. And I was trying to figure out where the heck, where, the, where it come from? Like, what? who is this woman I'm writing about? Because I don't know if it's me. But uh, <laughs> part of it, yeah, is in every woman. In every woman. But I'm like, this is a specific type of woman that I'm painting here. And so I've decided, you know, to explore who that woman is more within this project. It gives me the freedom to um, to show my sexy side, to show, you know, my humorous side, you know, because a lot of people think I'm mad serious. I don't know what that's about. But to be able to show that in my own way, because if you told me to be sexy, I wouldn't know how the hell to do that. But if you told, if, you know, but just me being me in the way that I do it, it just kind of comes off as that, you know? Okay. Right. So Moon, I'm on your Spotify right now, right? Mm -hmm. And I see a song called Drinking Buddies. Uh -huh. Explain that <laughs> song to me, please. I wrote that song when I was at a bar. I went to a bar and... um I watched this situation happen. It was a girl that walked in and the guy was sitting next to her. And it was like a very mutual conversation. They was talking about where they worked, who their spouses were, all of those things, you know, children showing pictures of kids and everything. But after every shot, <laughs> things start to get a little bit more loose, you know. <laughs> I'm observing this thing. I'm like, oh lord, <laughs> what's gonna happen over here? There, premium people watching yeah. <laughs> while having a casual drink. <laughs> and so I, I was like, this will be inter interesting to see how this plays out. Now, when I took it back to my producing partner, I told him about what I saw, and we started to formulate. And he was like, oh, that happens every once in a while, you know. And I was like, but. What if we switched it around as opposed to the fact that she leaves with him, that maybe she gains a sense of morality at the end and don't leave with him because she has a spouse. That's right. You no, know, like it's, the, it's the drinking portion. It can happen to any of us. I mean, right. we married. We ain't dead. You know, <laughs> so we, you, <laughs> you might find somebody you vibe with. And then yeah. it's all the more you get that lip with courage in you, the more you start questioning your choices. And so, you know, that's why I don't drink oh, alcohol no more. I'm good. Oh, I understand. <laughs> Is that a story wrapped up with Andre? No, I'm I with that. Right. But that's also why, you know, there's men that will ask you out specifically. They'll be like, oh, can I take you out for a drink? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Well, you know me and dates anyway, FMI. It takes enough just to get me on a date. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> alone, like, you're not just going to take me for drinks. You just, if that gives me the indicator that you just want to get me inebriated. Right. You know? Because that's your choices get like real questionable when you get uh -huh. drunk. Like, I'm real like questionable. Drinking, no, I mean, thanks. So. I, I I ended up standing on bars singing. I'm telling you. It's, oh. it's, 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 <laughs> I normally end up buying more food than I need. I, I don't know. I get extra hungry. <laughs> that is crazy. Well, I hear that. But yeah, that's how that song came about. It was a really, um, really dope song. I really uh, enjoyed uh, creating that song. And, you know, a lot of the other, you know, tunes that I have created so far. Um it's been it's been good. I mean, the, the, the project has been moving slow, but be, that's because, as you as you know, if you you know, I have two musical units that I'm that I'm balancing. And um, a lot of times when you try to force one to move in the direction that you want it to move and the other one is just opening doors like here's the red carpet. There you go. So it's like I stopped trying to force which direction I need to go within my journey and just surrender to whichever one at the time is requiring my attention. And so that's kind of where I am right now. And, and VPR, just to say, uh, you know, being a musician myself, when you have to watch, you know, other DJs or anybody in the same profession as you, and they're getting some limelight, 
you're not jaded to it, but you're seeing it and you're like, ah, you know mm -hmm. what? I got to focus on my path. I got to work a little bit harder mm -hmm. so my light could shine as bright. And that's mm -hmm. what I always say to myself. And we get lost in that because we're always Look. chasing the next single. We're always chasing the next, the next thing that excites us. Absolutely. As artists. And we get lost in it. Absolutely. I, I, I do my best not to do that. Mm -hmm. I do my best to not worry about what everyone else is doing, because when I when I do that, I lose focus on what it is that I'm supposed to do. And then I'll start to question myself. I start to question, you know, OK, why is it taking longer for me than it is for everybody else? Yeah. This, that and the third. And you start comparing yourself to other people who, in my opinion, is not on my level. And I don't mean that in, in a vainglorious way, but you're not on the the level that I'm on when I think about the way that I do things. You see what I'm saying? I, I'm I'm aware of my gift. I'm aware of my talent, but I believe in humility. I believe that once you decide that to let your ego take control, then you're on a downward spiral to ruining everything. And so I check myself daily, like dead ass. I be in the mirror on some old Kendrick Lamar, like be humble. <laughs> Sit down. That's, that's, that's my that's my talk. When I yeah. feel like it's getting there, I will literally be in the mirror rapping that song. That's right. Humility <laughs> is such an important part because, like you said, when you start to let that ego take over, it goes every which mm -hmm. way. And and comparison is also very destructive and self destructive. It is. You know, it is because you're not like anyone else. You're not like anyone else. You're not like anyone else. That's and right. no matter if, if you know, people, you know, swag still do whatever, you know, it's one of those things where it's like you can never be me because I am me and That's I right. shine differently. I'm not saying that you don't shine bright. I just shine differently. That's right. And so we can all respect each other as artists and respect each other's, you know, you know, flow, but you know, I've had, I had to learn how to do that because I, I did feel left behind at one point. I did feel like, oh, I'm not getting the support. Nobody understands what I'm doing. Nobody's checking for me. And when people started to check for me, I ain't trusted. Mm. Like, I don't, it's like, you know, where were you? Another Kendrick Lamar joint. I'll be on some King Gunther. Like, yeah. where were you? Right. And right. so I, I make sure that the people who are around me are authentic. And the other people that, you know, are the spectators and there are, there are watchers. There are people who stalk your stuff just to see what you're doing, when you're doing it, how you're doing it. And I always deal with all of that with grace and humility. I don't have time to be messy. I don't have time for that foolishness in my life. I don't. My goal is the art. My go It's like breathing to me. It's not like I'm not chasing the next single. I'm not chasing the next song. It's my life. I've been doing this ever since I was young. So this is my life. So if I'm not doing anything creative, I'm dying. I'm dying. That's just how I get down. And VPR, this is the information that we love here. We have so many unsigned artists that tune in every week. And they message us and they tell me this like, hey, I see what you guys are doing. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm loving it right now. I'm, I'm having an issue putting out my records. And mm -hmm. people get lost in their, on their way to their, to, to their bag or to their past. Mm -hmm. say. If but people yes. knew what artists go through just to get that song out, I mean, if you knew we're not, the, we, I'm not saying we're not even talking about radio play that you have to go and pay. No, all that. Not we're not even, even talking about Spotify. Even we're not even talking about the That's write ups. Right. We're not even getting into right. the, the business it's aspect important. of these, even after the creativity ends, right. you know, after the studio shuts off its lights, mm -hmm. then the real work. The begins. real work comes in, and and a lot of people have people to do that for them. I'm a one-stop shop. You see what I'm saying? I have I have PR and everything, but it's like for a long time, I did it all on my own because I could not trust other people to do it for me. I have that I have that tribe now where I trust them with my art. But beforehand, I did not have that, and I didn't trust nobody to get stuff done the way that I needed to get it done. And so I start. I used to wait. For people, I waited for people to do what they say that they were going to do, and I learned you're not going to do what you say you're going to do. That get done. I'll that's get it done. I think as entrepreneurs, that's why we're able to learn how to do so many different things. You know, not only does it empower us, but it mm -hmm. gives us the ability to not have to be reliant on mm -hmm. you know other people, and we can do things in a timeline. So it gives it speeds up the process. It just you know it opens doors. So. 
I know how hard it is to get to get a team and I know who you have now. Yeah, and it feels it good. Oh my gosh. It feels good to be able to have someone that not only that you trust, mm -hmm. but someone that is authentic. There's a sisterhood there. There's, there's a, um, you know, there is a love there. Like I got her back forever because I know she has my back. And then, you know, we're going to help each other, you know, because, you know, for her, for her company, I do um, artist development. You see what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's not just a, oh, you're going to represent me. I, I am going to pour back into what it is that you're trying to do as well, because I have that skill level, but it feels good to be able to breathe a little bit and go, I don't got to do that. Let, let somebody else do that. It's because it's, I know that that person got me. That's and right. so that feels amazing. <laughs> Trust me, I, I, I can understand with my partner, DJ FMI, like the synergy and how we work so well together. And it took a long time for me, mm -hmm. too, to find mm -hmm. that. So, you know, it's like when you find that partner and you find your people that you know are your tribe and have your back, mm -hmm. it feels good. Because I think in business, it can be more difficult and more timely to find. It's hard enough to find that in life, like in personal and socially. Right. You know, sometimes you can have that and still not have that in business because so many people are accustomed to competing against one another right you know, instead of working together like you said earlier mm -hmm. we if you gave us all three different beats we all write music we all mm -hmm. do music we would write three completely different songs exactly and, and i don't doubt that they would all be dope af but mm -hmm. that's the thing about being a creator we're all unique and we love to celebrate that uniqueness and exactly so, go ahead Kevin. you can finish no, I was just going to ask her, like, what's next? I know you've been performing all around. I've missed a couple of your shows, unfortunately, when you were in New York. But hopefully I'm able to make it out to the next one. So please yeah. tell us what's next for you. Mom. Well, right now, um, I'm still uh, putting the final touches on my solo project with, you know, with this and with the um, the blues band. I, I also have a blues band called. Would I be able to ask the name of the project? Yeah, yeah, I got to ask. I got to get that VPR exclusive. I ain't going to sit here and lie now. Uh, okay, I we exclusive, yeah, no. exclusive. Okay, because I've kept it on. I've kept it under wraps, but the, the name of the project is Suge Avery. Suge Avery. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Suge Avery. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. A little background. Y'all know sexy Suge. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, um, I've been you know going back and forth about the name of the project, but that's the one that's just kind of stuck with me because that's the type of woman that I'm describing. She's you know all of these things, and um, every woman got a little bit of sugar gay her. Let's just let's just keep that real. Um, and with the uh, blues band, you know I have a blues band called Mama Moon and the Rump Shakers, and uh, blues allows me to tap into my spiritual side, taps into the to, to the roots of the soil, you know, from where I come from, you know, my people come from in South Carolina. And so we kind of, I really kind of go deep. It's a different look, a different energy, a different everything with that. And um, we recently, um, as of Sunday, we won the DC Blue Society Battle of the Bands. And so we will be competing in Memphis, wow. Tennessee in January yeah. for the International Blues Challenge. Okay. And so um, we, Congratulations, uh, yeah, Matt. so we're preparing, preparing for Memphis and um it's just been it's just been a whirlwind like since that happened on Sunday it's just been like nonstop nonstop so um I'm just happy that I'm able to to do my art I'm happy that I'm able and we're also recording with Mama Moon and the Rum Shakers as well um and that the title the uh the uh, project is called White Magic Woman so not black white because I'm about healing, I'm about love, I'm about, you know, we ain't about that foolishness. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so got two projects on deck, two different units, two different musical styles, and um, they will be coming soon. You know, VPR, like I said, I was on the YouTube earlier, that explains a lot. So I watched the, the Tiny Desk, and then mm -hmm. I watched the other performances when you're on stage, and it mm -hmm. was just like, I, I think you were doing your spoken word. And I was, mm -hmm. at first I was just like, wait, am I hearing a song? I was watching you going off, and I was like, this is dope. Mm -hmm. So now I understand the other side of the coin with your, your music. Yes. So and you that, know, that we have awesome. we have a YouTube page with Mama Moon and the Rum Shakers too. And you will see the 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 the, the difference as well with that. Because you know, when I do blues, 
it's it's gritty. So it's you know everyone's like you never lose your voice. And you got like it's like a Anna James, Nina Simone, like this whole vibe. And you know I'm always barefoot. You know I always have my face painted. Always got you know the hats. You know when in the things. So it's it's a different uh, portion of who I am as a person that I get to express through my music. So I always believe that the sacred and the profane coexist to make an equal person. And I get an opportunity to um, explore both of those sides with my music. That is amazing. That Thank is you. absolutely amazing. I love it. I can't wait to see you perform live. So please tell us before um, we get ready to bring on our next guest, what kind of advice do you have for artists that are like trying to find their way and trying to figure out their niche? Because we know that you're multifaceted. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest? I just I I would say just continue to to do. Don't question it. Just do it. It's 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 a lot of you know. Well, someone else is doing that type of thing, but they're not you. People don't know what they want until you show them. Seriously, it's like they're not gonna like my kind of music. They're not gonna like my style. They don't know what they want until you show them. Period. I That's it. That. Don't second guess yourself. You get on out there and you do what your heart is telling you to do. Don't try to catch up with nobody and don't look behind you either. What didn't work back then, it's okay. It's done. It didn't work. You try something else, but you got to continue to move forward because a lot of, a lot of people, they give up. They give up. Don't give up because you're a mother. Don't, don't you dare do that. Don't you dare do that. Don't give up but because of your children. Continue to go because of your children. Continue to work because of your children because they're watching you. Because they're, they're going to see that. And, you know, they're depending on you to teach them. Exactly. How so a lot of people throw their dreams away because of adulting. Don't do that. Keep going. I did. That's right. I did. Y'all see my skin? Honey, I just turned 44. Come on now. Okay. okay. <laughs> now, did you just turn 44 yeah. in Libra season? Libra season, October 21st. Oh, it's a full Libra. It's a full Libra. Yes. And, I'm, Libra. And, I, right, and I'm not ashamed to tell my age because it's a thing where it's like, we still out here. That's right. Oh, absolutely. We I'm still doing it. Like Shoot, I may be on anti vibes, but I'm going to still get mad. I can still drop a love <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it. VPR, the energy, the lead. But yeah, it. just keep going. Keep going, y'all. Don't 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 give up if it's important to you. Don't let life get in the way because sometimes that is your outlet. DPR, you heard it from Moon herself. Um I, I'm uh I stand by that. That was beautiful. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Absolutely. So we appreciate you for coming on. We definitely look forward to having you back and uh Hopefully we'll be out to you, one of your shows in here, here in New York very soon. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So we appreciate you, Moon. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And thank you so Wait, much Moon. for joining us. Thank you. Thank you all for having me. You're welcome. You. Have a great day. Ciao. Oh, <laughs> gotta love it. Gotta love it. You guys, you can see scrolling. That's where you can follow her, Moon Newville Music. All right. So go and check her out. That energy. Yes. Is so yes. That energy that was amazing. I was about to bring that up too. That Libra energy is elite. You can't, you can't escape it. Come on. Also VPR, you know, I got something on the top of my mind. Tell um, me. I was on Instagram the other day and mm -hmm. I came across a post from Rich P and he, uh, he's one of the artists that we listen to on VPR. He's actually a part of the playlist. So go definitely check out Rich P. Yeah, but he had a post on, especially in our industry, the hip hop, um, music industry about information starving mm -hmm. and how how many people do it in order to feel like they have one up on the next man especially in new york I agree. we're built off the crab and uh the barrel mentality yeah. and information starving you won't even be using your assets but you're afraid for somebody else to use it to yeah. use it so you'd I rather agree. not even open your mouth i agree i i find it to be interesting um <laughs> I mean, I think it's kind of a double-edged sword because there are, like, specifically with me, let, let's give this um, example, in business, right? 
sometimes people will call me up and they'll use the term like, I want to pick your brain. And that pick your brain really becomes like a business consultation. So it's like, okay, <laughs> this is my bread and butter. And this is what I teach people to do. I'm not just going to give you these nuggets for free. Right. Um, but it's different from someone who's like, well, I know this and I know I could you, like, you know how much we do for artists. Yep. I, I rode on the train an hour a couple of weeks ago on my way to PA to shoot this, these videos. And I gave this woman so much free business consultation because she's a local mom and she was just taking notes, taking notes, taking notes. And now she's in a business program that I told her about. And I didn't charge her a dime. I did that for the love because I want to see her win. So I think when people are genuine like that, they'll never hold back. But I do think that there also do need to be boundaries in place because information is so free these days, right? I don't think there's really an excuse not to be able to learn things on your own, even if you yeah. feel like somebody's holding Google back. Is right there. Yeah. Right Google there. Is right there, VPR. And it's it's got so much information <laughs> beyond you know the fact that there's books and programs and apps and master know, classes, but they're gonna yeah. try to waste your time to you depending on the source, but yes there's so many so many resources that i think um so even when information starving and i do i do agree like i I've, I've seen a lot of people really ugly, that yeah. like well i i can do this and i can do this and i'm like okay well how do you do it? well i'd have to do it this yeah, way yeah reach out to this one and that but and try and to be vague with the explanation of how <laughs> what what activity is supposed to go on oh i can yeah. get this done for you <laughs> only if 1300 uh -huh. which i don't mind that i'll pay whatever you have to pay but right. let's let's hear the process sir that's right if, especially if I need to know about the authenticity, okay? <laughs> Be trying to gatekeep. You can't gatekeep in 2022, man. Nah. It, it's, it's too much information out there. Yeah. <clears throat> information is free. So at the end of the day, even if you find yourself in a gatekeeping type of situation, there's too many resources. Follow people that are leaders in the industries that you're trying to be a leader in and ask them questions and follow their processes and go check out their master classes. And there's eBooks. There's just abundance of information. Yeah. There's seminars you can even look for. Like if you do, you definitely want to dive into a different industry. That's yeah. what I, I do in my free time. You know what I mean? I can never not sharpen my tools. So yeah, I'm never too good to go outside and learn. Also Kiana in the top of this hip hop news, you know, I'm getting real. I, I really want him to, to stay out of the way. Cool. And I'm not saying it in a negative way. Are we back but, to Kanye? No, nah, not Kanye. It's my man Tory Lanez, bro. Oh, like, he's back. <laughs> yo, Tory, Tory, Tory. You got all up. of that, and now he's no, just playing low. <laughs> VPR, no, and that's what kills me. Tory, I don't. You know, I'm not gonna say what happened with Meg. I wasn't there. You know, I'm bullet fragments. Her foot. She seemed to be twerking well. Right. She seems to be okay, making a bag. Um, but Tory recently got caught up again. He was at a show like a week ago, and he put the pause on August Alistina. No. Yeah, and remember Tory short. You know what I'm saying, Tory. Yes. You know what I'm saying. He's short. He like he like five foot that. three, four, <laughs> round him. You know. Yeah. And he put the pause on him, and now and now they they're bringing up charges on him. Now he on house arrest because it's oh connected my. to his Magnus Stein case, and they're painting him as a crazy ass individual. That shit sucks. Oh, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. You should have left August alone. Let him have Jada Pinkett or whoever he has. Let let That's him do right. what he got to do over there. That's right. Let people be. Oh my God. I cannot FMI. You see why I stay offline? Yeah, yeah yo. I, I try to go on like two days before VPR, you know what I'm saying? Right. Make sure I tell my head outside, like, what, what y'all crazy is doing out right I now? I know. That's what I feel like when I turn on the news or I turn on something to be able to um to do that. But let's definitely bring, let's bring up, up our next guest. Our next guest, Vicky. Um, and I'm going to I have to take this call. How you doing? How you doing? Hi, Vicky. Hey, how you doing? We're great. Give me one second. Go ahead, FMI. So, Vicky, I have you here, and you're a music producer slash DJ, co-creator of official, let me make sure I get this right, QSTV. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's get awesome. into it. Can yep. you explain to me a little bit about what you do and how you maneuver through this industry? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a music producer. I uh, started producing when I was, like, 16. Um, prior to that, I was playing drums since I was, like, five um but i'm a little rusty now so don't don't ask me to, you know play some break beats and stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> I'm production and then i kind of abandoned drums but i still have a love i mean e and even what i learned with drums i put into uh the music you know with rhythm like rhythm is everything to me um so yeah been producing since i was 16 and then djing i started djing uh say like three four years ago um and just enjoy 
doing it and like discovering new music and and you know breaking new records and all types of great things. Thing that like, DJ, see when you're talking from DJ to DJ, when you go yeah. in your crates and you you oh. find what they what they don't know they want to hear, but you oh got it though, God. and nobody else got that. You be like, mm-hmm, right. look to the left and right. I love but it. they don't know they want to hear. That's they right. Don't know until you yeah. break it, and I think that's that that uh, that's where DJing like that's where it comes from is breaking records, and it's kind of I don't know. It's I seem like now it seems like now it's like shifting to where it's just you want to play all the you know the popular stuff that everyone knows, and of course you play that. But what happened to playing all the new dope music that you find, maybe from artists that might not be known like that? Like, what happened to that? So, you see, uh, and, and Vicky, you know, just to, just to tie it in, in New York City, because, you know, we're based out here, mm-hmm. they, they want to hear what's on the radio and at oh, least with, at these clubs. And it's annoying, you know what I'm saying? We got New York got their sound and it's, it's all right. But at the same time, it, I guess it's really upon us to push the culture forward with trying to break some of these yeah. records. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I, I love that we, we still have that in mind, even though we see what oh. the industry is trying to make us do. Yeah, I know. I'm like, I okay. ain't listening to Future all night. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> There's more artists out there than just Future. You know what I mean? But uh, uh, so yeah, DJing, I, I love it. Always have fun uh, just doing gigs and, and doing stuff like that. And then QSTV, it stands for Quality Sounds TV. And it's something that me and my brother, Marcus Pachado, which I think you guys interviewed him. That's my brother. Oh, and- yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, okay. Yeah, so um, we started QSTV and that was at the height of the pandemic when like we were on lockdown, nothing happening. And we were like, yo, we got to do something. I'm like no one's doing shows. So what can we do? So a friend of ours, um, he has a club called Quantum in Gowanus, Brooklyn. And we told him, like, yo, can we use your club to, like, just shoot different artists, like, have them perform and then interview them and have it like a YouTube series? You know, like how, like, the music uh, shows used to be back there. We used to have, like, you know, like, behind 106 and Park or Behind the Music, whatever like that. And, you, like you know, that, uh, uh, in the and basement, all that, yeah. Rap, yeah, Rap City in the basement, all these different shows, right? We were like, let's start music box. YouTube. Exactly. Yeah. Music box, <laughs> uh, Yo MTV Raps, all that stuff. We wanted to bring that back. Um, so we started doing it and we just started with our friends, um, Cole Crush, Sandy, uh, Chad, New York Nick, Joe Blacks. We got a collective and we were like, yo, let's like do this. So we got our little GoPro cameras, our iPhones, and like we kept it like real original because we didn't have much. Pandemic made everybody get to work. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had to do the sound, the lights, and like made an actual show. Um, so if you go on our YouTube channel, QS TV YouTube channel, you'll see tons of episodes of just different artists like we showcased. Um, and then once everything started to reopen, we were like, let's start throwing events. So now till this day, we we uh, had got a partnership with Soul House. And Pirate Studios, where like every month we throw events and just showcase music producers and, and DJs and different artists. It's called the Link Up, and yeah, it's been going great. It's it's taken off. People like follow along and come to events, and like yeah, we just come across so many different creatives, and um, you know, just love continuing to showcase you know independent artists, just like what you guys do. You guys, you know, you guys interview yeah. independent artists, so yeah. we want to keep pushing that forward and, and, you know, just put these different dope artists in different uh, positions and in, in different environments where they can be heard more and maybe, you know, get a new crowd, new audience, um, you know, to enjoy their music and be new followers and fans. Um, so that's, yeah, that's QS TV. Yep. I love it. I mean, I think it's so important because outside of what, you know, not that com- not the commercial radio is what it once was even 10 or 15 years ago, mm-hmm. but there's specific artists that are commercially pushed that you see all over and over again, that you see on Instagram, that you see, you know, on TV that are going on tour, but there's so much talent and even more talent than what we see on these stages and, you know, so many different genres of music and, and stuff to explore. We were talking with um, Moon about, you know, uniqueness as an artist and with independent artists, I think you can just really learn to appreciate that so much more because just in New York, there's oh, so many yeah. talented people, yet alone going to the DMV, hitting the South and mm-hmm. seeing how the sound shifts and, you know, between blues and jazz and hip hop and pop oh, and rock. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's so so much that we, we come across all the time. And just my friends in general, like my peers, people that I'm surrounded by, they are like some of the most talented people that I know, even producers. Like 
we have a thing called the link where we have all these different producers do beat sets and stuff like that and i'm just like the stuff that i hear i'm like yo all these rappers like they gotta <laughs> like you know, <laughs> up to all these like different producers and stop using the same people because i'm like yo if you want a different sound, the nerd, the like trap beat <laughs> and then go off on it yeah. but, uh, uh, Vicky so I'm looking at your baby girl EP oh yeah explain yeah. explain that to me what's the thought process behind that what's the creation yeah, so process we were on the cover that's my little sister and um the purpose I got the that, family I'm- busting right now you know what shout out I love it VP I'm, I'm, I'm loving this yeah that's not that's not even me that's my little sister but the point of that and it's funny my mom she took that picture that was when we took her to college we uh we dropped her off this was you know freshman year her getting started and um she didn't want to go that's why you see her face like vpr the picture is hilarious i wish i could show y'all i was trying to show y'all on the virtual screen she got the only (laughs) it's it's hilarious she didn't want to go um but I was like, that's a perfect picture for a cover. I'm going to use that for something. So the purpose of the album is just kind of like, it sonically represents her journey from high school going into college life and having to adjust to that. Um, she's also like a basketball player. So she's a student athlete. Um, so just that adjustment and her like navigating through college, that's kind of what, pretty much what the album represents. So that's why, yeah, on the cover, she's like, oh, I don't want to do it. Come on. If you have a, a nephew or a younger sibling, <laughs> you've seen it. And oh, you've seen that you've face. all seen the face. I, I have six like, children. I'm sure I've seen oh, that face. Yeah, 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 if you have children, yeah, like, you know, it's just like, oh, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's what Baby Girl is about. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what upcoming projects are you working on right now? Or what club sets? It's Halloween. Are you oh, in any clubs yeah, this weekend? Because both of us should be. Let's get our yeah. money out here. <laughs> yeah, I actually did a Halloween event at the Meatpacking District. Uh, it was like a couple days ago. It was great. It was like a family thing um, outside, like in Ganford, uh place. And they just had kids, you know, with the cute costumes and candy and face paint. And yeah, I was playing music and DJing for a little bit. Um, and then it's funny, a lot of my other friends, they came in was uh, performing. My brother, he performed like later. So it was like a family affair. It was really dope. Um, so I did that. And then, um, yeah, this new album, Casters World. Uh, so it's uh, it's out now on Bandcamp, but it's going to drop everywhere November 4th. Uh, so that's the current uh, project that I have like coming out. And this is like my debut album. So I'm like really excited. I'm about to say, um, how excited, Vic? Vic uh, are we doing a release party? We, am I, I getting a single? Song. Am I getting a drop? Yeah, yeah, you can. Come on, of course. <laughs> okay. Um, I did a listening party. I did a immersive, uh, it was like an immersive installation album listening party. So I did it at Zero Space. So I had all these crazy like visuals while the music was going. There's like a dome. You go inside the dome. I had different producers do beat sets. Um, and then there's another space where I had like artists that were on the album, um, had them do their own sets and perform. Um, so it was like a whole big like event that I... I, I would love to come, come to this amazing. event and, uh, oh. <laughs> and and cover it with Kiana under VPR if you guys yeah. would allow us. Yeah. I, it sounds oh, okay. dope. No, yeah, no, it was it was great. But the actual official release party is actually going to be at Soul House uh, November 18th. It's going to be at the Chelsea uh, uh, location. So, of course, you guys get an invitation invitation to come out. And um, I'll be p- performing songs off the album. And we're going to have, like, just guest uh, producers and guest artists. And it's going to be just fun. So, definitely, you guys are invited November 18th. So, yeah. We appreciate yep. that. That is dope. Yeah, feel special VPR. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, Vicky, I don't know if you're like any other DJ. I've finally gotten to the point now when I'm seeing other DJs, when I'm going out and I know I'm going to meet my other DJ friends, I'm like, you know what? Let me leave my laptop at home. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> for all the years I've been doing it, and they're gonna be like, yo, bro, you want to hop on? I'm like, you know what? Normally I would, but I, was just I want you to shine. Yeah, you today. do. <laughs> you know, I do it all the time. I do that all the time. Seriously. It's, like, it's uh, a bad habit, you know what yeah. I mean? But, yeah, I do that all the time. But uh, uh, no, yeah. So yeah, that's happening. But yeah, with the album, um, it sonically represents uh, just my journey through COVID. So the good and the bad, you hear all that. Um, so like with the bad, it's just that frustration of um, being, of course, being you know locked in the house. But, um, you know, like having a lack of creativity, having like a block. At one time, I had like a block where I was like, you know, I can't come up with anything. I'm just really frustrated. But then also on TV, just seeing the death toll go up, having family and friends pass away from COVID, 
Um, of course, seeing our people slain in the streets, which is nothing new. We see it all the time. But having that during that moment and seeing that on TV, too, like all this is taking a toll on, on me, like mentally. I'm like, this is like too much. This is like overwhelming. Um, so that's like that that frustration you'll hear in there. But then the good of starting QS TV, um, of finally being able to create this project, um, of finally being able to be free, being able to like go outside now, interact with your peoples, you know what I mean? And finally be able to like- And not you. worrying about, am I gonna die today? Or right. am I gonna go back right. home and right. everybody gonna die because I went out today? Right, exactly. <laughs> am I gonna bring death home? Right, right, right. It's I'm really like a, 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 a suit, like a whole suit. Like, I'm like, yeah. oh, man. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, this yeah. is how the world is now. Um, so you hear all of that, you know, all in one. Um, so yeah, that's what, pretty much what Cassis Road represents. And pretty much, I just wanted it to uh, be something for people for people to take away from it. It's just to, um, you know, you're going to go through trials and tribulations, but to just keep going at what you're doing and you're going to be all right. You know, you're going to, there's a light at the tunnel and you got to get through this little hurdle, but you're going to be all right. Everything's going to be okay. So that yeah. was the point of me like creating this project. It was like therapy for me, but wanted to be therapeutic for, you know, other people out there too. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. I honestly feel like, and you're so right, you know, there were so many different levels of emotionality going on. Yeah. And yeah. politics. Right. And politics, too. And I mean, politics, <laughs> social injustices, right? And then a whole pandemic on top of, like, new strains of the pandemic. So... Inflation. It, inflation. inflation. Come on. Finance, like... Uh, Unemployment. Rent, rent increase. Right. Yeah, rent increases, Just all of that. All the stuff on top of. I, I feel like the world almost went through like a purge. You know what I'm saying? And I honestly feel like the coming out on the other side of it, all of us that have come out on the other side, like we are all here with such purpose and determination to really live out that purpose. Like that is what we need to do is live out our purpose. So when I see the positivity and, you know, people that have endured things, but they're spreading their message with love and, and with joy to help others. I mean, that's what we're all about here on VPR. So it, it just feel good to me. This is why my favorite day of the week is Thursday. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. So, so what's, what's next? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. no, go ahead, Kelly. What's next? Um, so, yeah. Of course, pushing the album. Um, it drops November 4th. I have a single that's going to be dropping off the album called Vacay. It's gonna. I'm gonna have like an animated uh, lyric video for that one, so I can't wait to like release that. I'm really excited. Um, and then in November, I can't say much, but I'm gonna be DJing on Broadway, and that's all I can say. So yeah, I'll be DJing on Broadway. Um, and yeah, just more to come. Uh, so also, me and my brother have a, a music production team called Mock Seven Music. Um, so we have different projects out called uh, Black Summer. It's like a whole compilation album of like different crazy rappers that are like fire and we produced the whole album. So the next one, BS4, Black Summer uh, Volume 4, will be dropping like soon. So that's another project that'll be coming out and I can't wait for that one. Like, I think this is like the best one out of all the other projects we've done. Um, so I'm really excited about that, yeah. You heard it here first, VPR. You're gonna be on <laughs> Broadway DJ. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you got the album dropping November 4th on all platforms. You know how lit it's going to be. And the 18th, make sure y'all pop out to her event that she will be performing live, guys. Uh, make sure that you tell them where they could find you on social media. Oh, yeah. It's a uh, catch my Instagram underscore C A S I S underscore. And if you want to hear Cast Girl now before the whole world uh, has it on their phone, you can just go to my band camp. Um, of course, you know, people don't like to just, you know, if I say go to Google and search. So you can go to my Instagram and click the link in my bio and you'll see my band camp right there. Once you click on it, you can purchase and download the album and, and enjoy it before everybody else does. So, yeah. We love it exclusively. <laughs> Absolutely great. Okay, we love the all the black girl magic that we've been getting here today. Honestly. My big sister Moon came on before man. Yes. Her, <laughs> yes. her energy is great. You guys have us so amazing. I love her. I would, and we love her too. And she's a Libra too, just like us. So you already know it was the <laughs> energy was so so great. Please, we we love to leave everyone with an inspiring message, and we'd love for you to give us the final word of the day. Stay in your lane. Just stay in your lane. Follow your journey, your path. Do not follow these trends. 
because these trends are here and they are gone tomorrow. So don't follow it. Of course, it's a big thing. Oh, yeah, I want to sound like this or maybe I want to dress like this. But just stay in your, name, your lane. Be, be yourself, man. So do that. Stay in your lane. People will recognize it. They'll recognize that un uniqueness and they'll, they'll follow along to it. So stay in your lane. That's yeah. It. I'm with you hundred percent on that. Be on, be authentically you and let yep. people that, you know, gravitate toward you do that. We appreciate you so much for being here, Vicky. Thank you so honor. much. Right, yeah, it's been an honor for us as well. And of course it's Thursday. It's VPR radio. We love you guys for watching and tuning in. Please make sure if you haven't watched, scroll on back, start from 11 so you can uh, get back to moon and you can, <laughs> Uh, catch Vicky in the bottom half of the show. Please make sure that you share and we will be back here next week. God bless everyone. Stay toxic free and stay dope. Peace, girl.